Are you an engineering student and you're having a hard time passing your exam and you're constantly failing and not getting any good grades? Well, this video is for you because I'm going to show you guys how to really study the right way as an engineering student because trust me, it's way different than high school or any other type of exam. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video. This week we are taking a look at how to study for engineering exams which is way different than normal exams that you have in high school or other exams or like business exams. Trust me, it's way different. I mean, I was a student once and I had a hard time studying for engineering exams, but once I got the hang of it, I was passing right and left. So it's completely fine. You just need to understand how to study. So in this video, I'm spilling all of my secrets that I gained over the years. So let's with the video now you guys have to keep in mind that over the years of my studies i tried a ton of learning strategies i did the pomodoro method did not work for me i did the 90 minutes method it was okay i did the two hour method that one was better for me so the first thing that you guys have to do is find your own learning strategy because if you guys don't know the timeline that you're going to study you guys will not really succeed in this part also please understand your body and understand if you're more concentrated or productive at night or in the morning and it's usually in the morning every single human being is more productive in the morning than at night i was a night owl once too but now i'm not i'm just more creative at night you know that's what you'll be all are but in the mornings i'm way more productive i get things done before noon way faster than i do at night and that actually is the case with everyone so keep those things in mind and then let's just jump right in and look at the video now before we start with this video make sure you guys like comment and subscribe to my channel i mean i'm giving away years of experience for free so make sure you guys do that and then let's jump right in and take a look at how i managed to pass all my exams and get good grades in engineering school now as i mentioned the first step that you guys have to take is understand the learning strategy that works for you does pomodoro work for you does the two hour method work for you the 90 minute method what does work for you and for your body for example the pomodoro method which is learn 25 minutes take a five minute break learn 25 minutes and learn a five minute break does not work for me at all because the minute i'm out of that 25 minute zone on the 25 minute concentration zone i'm out you will not get me concentrated ever again it's really hard it takes a ton of energy so that does not work for me what worked for me was studying for two hours and then taking a 20 minute break that was way better and the two hours were done pretty fast trust me yes i always set a timer and and it was gone pretty pretty fast which was crazy to me because i was studying non-stop for two hours and it felt like 10 minutes so that worked for me and you guys need to understand what worked for you guys i know people that love the pomodoro method and it works for them completely fine and they can get right back into working after a five minute break i cannot do that i feel like i do need my 20 minutes that's why i did the two hour and 20 minute break and yeah it was way better for me so understand that and choose your own learning strategy more like learning timeline where you guys want to study now after you guys have a learning strategy and a time to study let's get on with the timeline of studying now you guys need to know that a engineering exam or like a university exam is not like a high school exam you guys need way way more time to study than just a high school exam i mean in high school i used to study a day before the exam in university i start three weeks for the exam and I plan every single day so the timeline is really really important to learn everything you learn in six months more like in like one semester it's a lot so you have you guys have to add a ton of time into it my timeline was between two and three weeks depending on the exam and how hard it was if it was an easier exam and I was active in every single lecture and did the homework then it would be two weeks and if it was an exam where I did not do the homework, more like I didn't work a lot on it, it would be three weeks. So make sure you guys get that. Two, between two and three weeks is an incredible timeline. Obviously, keep in mind that you have to study throughout the semester as well because you have homework, you have 
project, this and that. So, but at this time, in this two and three weeks, you guys have to study intensively. So between six to eight hours every single day. And if you're not a full-time student, or more like if you work part-time, which I did, um, I just took off more like my vacation days were in my finals. I know, I barely had any vacations. So my final days, more like my finals were my vacations where I sat down and studied for eight hours a day. And that's what helped me. Now the second step is preparation. After you have planned a time for the exam, you need to prepare everything you need to know. So take a look at all the slides, books, PDFs, notes, basically everything you have and create a list of things you need to learn. For example, if you have a web development exam, you would put HTML, CSS, JavaScript, ReactJS, AngularJS as some of the subjects that you need to learn. In this preparation, make sure you don't forget anything. After you have a list of things you need to learn, you have to set priorities to the elements in the list. Now, this part is up to you. You can do the most important ones first to least important ones, and then, or just do hardest to easiest. It's up to you because this is where you will start. Also, one thing you need to know is set the days where you learn one chapter alone. Depending on how many chapters there are, you can set between one to three days for each chapter. Also, you have to plan the last four or five days completely for practicing everything, so keep that in mind. Of course, sometimes you're done faster than planned or you need more time than planned. Just keep going, it's fine if the timeline shifts. Now, after you have prepared everything, let's get on with the summaries and summarizing everything. Now that you have a list, start writing summaries slash cheat sheets for each subject. I know writing summaries is not always convenient and that it won't really help you know all the stuff, but through the summaries, you will learn everything you need to know before having to apply them. For example, if you don't know how to concatenate two arrays, you could write it in your summary and learn it and then apply it in the exam. This is just an example, by the way. I've never seen that type of question in an exam because it's easy, but you get the point on how to write the summary. Now, of course, as I mentioned, the cheat sheets or the summaries are not meant for the exam. They are meant for you to apply them while you're studying and getting ready for the After exam. After you have your summary, start applying it. Now, just reading the summary and trying to memorize it won't help you. At the end of the day, you need to know how to apply it. So try to write a summary where you have the steps so you can apply it to the problems. So pick some example questions and try to answer the problems by using your summary as a cheat sheet. This way you will learn how to write a summary and cheat sheet correctly. The example question can be the ones from your weekly homework or from your lecture slides. Find the ones that your university and practically the professor in that lecture uses and has used in the last semesters. That way you will learn way more effectively and efficiently. You know, we are already a ton of steps in and all those steps were to prepare for this one. And it is to apply the knowledge that you just learned and apply the knowledge from the cheat sheets without using them. Now use the last four or five days to practice nonstop for the exam without the cheat sheet because this way you guys will know what you don't know and what you do and what you're strong at and what you aren't so this part is the most important part this is how you really practice the exam all of those other steps they were just to prepare you for this one so make sure you do this one also if you have access to the exams from the previous semester just practice with all of them beside the two newest ones so for example, if you have the exams of the year 2015 till 2021, put the 2020 and the 2021 exam aside and start practicing with the other ones. I mean, in this step, I don't really know what to tell you guys besides sit down and practice all of the problems. Um, I mean, reading the cheat sheet and the summary that you guys wrote over and over again will not help you at all if you guys don't know how to apply the knowledge that you guys just gained. So solving a problem is way more important in an exam than just knowing it. Now, remember I told you guys to put two of the newest exams aside. In this part, you guys have to practice with those two. Set a timer at exactly how many minutes you have for the exam, which is in uni, it is usually between 60 and 120 minutes and start testing your knowledge. 
this way you will know what your strengths and weaknesses are and you can work on your weaknesses so turn off everything and concentrate on taking the exams trust me in this step helped me more than the other ones combined now after practicing with the exams you guys will know all about your weakness and strength so you guys can work on your weaknesses and you know your strengths are strengths so they're gonna stay there and as i mentioned just writing the summary or the cheat sheet or reading it will not make you fast it does not work that way so practicing is the most important part